stupid Nintendo games. Who wants to compare pens? Yeah, let's do it. Styli, the bane of Steve Jobs' existence. Who wants a stylus? And yet, in the past 20 years, they have played a role on pretty much every Nintendo system since the DS. Except the Wii. The U-Draw tablet does not count. So today, on a particularly unnoteworthy date, let's just rank every official Nintendo stylus because I just have nothing better to do. You've clicked on this video, there's no turning back. This is the stylus that came with the original Nintendo DS in 2004, or as it was commonly nicknamed, the DS Fat. This little guy is actually pretty thin and short compared to the ones that came after it. Which is a little weird when you think about it, because as Nintendo's first touchscreen device, you'd think they would try to make the stylus larger but more comfortable. Maybe even make some space for it in the chunkier original DS. But this one just barely fits in my large hands, so, I don't know, C tier. I wanted to mostly cover styluses that were included with Nintendo systems in this video, since it will be near impossible to cover every licensed and third-party stylus out there. But I guess I'll shout out some honorable mentions from my collection. This first honorable mention technically isn't a stylus, but the original DS had a wrist strap with a thumb pad at the end that was advertised as a substitute for the stylus. Particularly in Mario 64 DS, where the game suggests you can use it on the touchscreen to emulate an analog stick. This sounds absolutely terrible on paper, but this actually sort of works. Using a thumb for movement is always going to be more natural than a stylus, and the pad actually allows your thumb to glide smoothly across the screen while getting more tactile feedback than something like a virtual joystick on a smartphone. So in terms of replicating analog stick movement, this is kind of 60% of the way there, which honestly isn't too shabby. I also imagine Hori heard some people complain that the included stylus was too thin, because they released the super long DS stylus as well. It had a cap that slid into the stylus slot of the original DS so you can attach it to the back of the system, so that's actually pretty clever. Too bad that won't fit on the DS Lite. The DS Lite stylus is probably what most people think of when they think about a stylus. And yeah, it's a great improvement over the first one. So much so that pretty much every future DS stylus is based on the foundation laid by the DS Lite stylus. Its position has been moved to the side of the system, which is a lot more convenient. It slides into the system and locks in place with a satisfying clack. And it's also longer and thicker in size, which, yeah, coming off the original DS is a much-needed change. It's not super long, but also not too short for my larger hands. And future Nintendo styluses have all been longer, shorter, or a similar size as this one. So you could say the DS Lite stylus is the perfect gold standard to judge against. B tier. An honorable mention goes to this large Mario-themed stylus that I completely forgot when I obtained, and also the Guitar Hero Guitar Pick. Yes, this is technically a stylus. And it does the job for what it's supposed to do, I just find it really funny looking on its own. It's funny how Nintendo nailed it so much with their second try at a stylus that when the DSi came around, the stylus barely received a makeover. You could even fit a DS Lite stylus pretty well into a DSi. The only real changes are that the nub shape at the end has changed to match the DSi, and it's now only slightly longer. So I'll just put this in B tier right above the DS Lite stylus. Oh, and it's still on the right side of the system, so that's good. Trust me, we will not have this consistency for very long. And surprisingly, even when the DSi grew larger in size with the DSi XL, the stylus still only grew slightly longer. It's still the same width as the DS Lite's, but now when you compare the two, you can see the extra length being added is starting to make quite a difference. And putting it next to the DSi stylus, it seems the tip has gotten larger as well. This is definitely one of the definitive Nintendo styluses in my opinion. It's the DS Lite's formula finally perfected, with a good length and solid build that fits snugly into the system. A tier. But guess what? This wasn't the only stylus that was bundled with the DSi XL. Because there is also the DSi XL Touch Pen. Look at this incredible thing. I have this pen in the Wii U blue color scheme here, which was originally released for a Wii U accessory pack. But it is the same model that was bundled with the DSi XL back in the day. And they brought it back for the Wii U for a reason. I don't care if this doesn't fit in the system or was originally made for elderly people to use the stylus more comfortably or whatever, this is peak Nintendo stylus. There's even a little thingy here at the top that looks like a clip, but isn't. Its sole purpose is to prevent the stylus from rolling around when placed down. S tier. So far, we've seen the evolution of the stylus throughout the Nintendo DS line, which has been a pretty stable evolution from a scrawny little stylus to near perfection. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that consistency, because now we're moving on to the 3DS line, which, uh... Oh boy. Let's start with the original Nintendo 3DS with its... Okay, first of all, they moved the stylus to the back. I will admit, it's very mildly annoying to have to flip the whole system around just to grab the stylus. And it's also not as easy to grip with one finger and slide out, I kinda have to do this pinching motion to get it out every time. But Nintendo made up for this shortcoming by making this their first and only telescopic stylus. I will admit, this looks pretty cool. And the shiny metallic look definitely complements the aesthetic of the original 3DS. Though I'm not sure if the telescopic function really has any use beyond allowing the stylus to fit in the 3DS vertically. Like every time I use it, I just extend it to the fullest length, which actually makes it slightly longer than even the DSi XL stylus. Unless some folks with smaller hands actually prefer having the stylus be shorter, or some guy out there is like, hmm, I prefer having my stylus be halfway extended today, I guess let me know in the comments. So while it mostly feels as fine as the DSi excels and looks very cool, the slight design inconveniences that kind of forced it to be telescoping in the first place bumped this down to bottom tier B tier for me. Sorry to the 3DS stylus nation. And I guess Nintendo fought the same, because on the 3DS XL, we're back to a non-telescopic stylus on the right side of the system, just like the DSi XL. They're actually pretty much the exact same length, but compared to the smooth plastic of the DSi XL stylus, the 3DS XL actually has a textured matte finish, which kind of gives it a better grip in the hand, especially coming from the metallic 3DS stylus which is more prone to slipping and collapsing in the middle of using it. So yeah, I would say this is a small but significant improvement over the DSi XL. Top tier A tier. Before we continue with the 3DS line, let's take a chronological detour to the Wii U, with the Wii U gamepad's built-in stylus, which is also near identical to the DSi XL, just being a smidge longer to accommodate the different nub shape. Otherwise, you can basically interchange it with the DSi XL stylus. Man, maybe I was wrong when I said the DS Lite stylus was the gold standard. Considering the Wii U gamepad basically shares the same styluses as the DSi XL, let's just put this right next to it on A tier. But the textured 3DS XL stylus still beats them out. Moving on to the middle child in the family of systems, we have the original Nintendo 2DS. This store stop slot may look ridiculous, but functionally it's built pretty well. And the stylus fits perfectly in the middle part here between the two halves of the unit. And given the amount of real estate there is on a 2DS, I'm glad to see it's also the same size as the Wii U gamepad stylus. You could say it's almost overkill for the small touchscreen. But this time, it also has groups on the nubs so you can grab it from the side even easier. I'm surprised it took 8 styluses before they tried adding groups to one of them. This feels just as good to use as the rest of the styluses in A tier. So I'm pretty sure at this point, you could combine the unique features from all of them to create the ultimate Nintendo stylus. Too bad Nintendo didn't do that because now it's time for the new Nintendo 3DS. That's right, the stylus is on the bottom this time. I want to know who at Nintendo is responsible for deciding where the stylus goes on the 3DS. Imagine having your job decisions turn into a WarioWare microgame. This time around, the stylus does not have the telescoping luxury of the original 3DS stylus. So what we get is back into DS fat territory. The stylus looks like a twig again. And it's actually also back to nearly the same length as that very first stylus. They're like long lost twins. The nub shape has been slightly redesigned actually, so you can now use the stylus to loosen the face plates on the outside of the system. Which is neat, but in my experience, fingernails also work just fine. Otherwise, this is C tier for me, sitting next to the original DS stylus and feeling just as fiddly. Oh hey, you can see the entire hole that the stylus sits in now. Looking at this just makes me think they really should've just put the stylus on the right side. And sadly, the new Nintendo 3DS XL doesn't fare much better, since the stylus is still on the bottom for this one. So there's not much room for a longer stylus still. Its thickness is now on par with the other styluses, but it's still quite short. And now another issue has risen from its placement on the bottom. On systems where the stylus is frequently used, like the one I've used since 2015, the stylus can start getting loose even when inserted all the way in. And when it's located on the bottom of the system and always facing the ground, it can often just slightly poke out like this while you play it. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who has had this problem. There is probably a non-zero number of cases where people have lost their stylus because of this. So while it is marginally better than the new 3DS stylus, it still goes in C tier for me. And compared to the original 3DS XL stylus, this is not even close. 
But hey, one last 3DS model, one final opportunity to fix all this. Look at this new Nintendo 2DS XL. It's got a sleek design, I love the purple color, the top screen looks like an old iPhone for some reason. They finally put the micro SD card slot next to the game card slot and gave them their own cover like the Switch, so clearly they will finally have the perfect stylus for... What happened here? How did they end up making it shorter than the original 3DS stylus fully retracted? Like, look, look at all this real estate on the side. They literally had one jump seat here. That stunk a little bit, but thankfully isn't the end of our journey. Because if you haven't heard, the latest official Nintendo stylus was released for the Nintendo Switch. This was announced in June 2020, to coincide with the Brain Age Switch entry that North America never got as revenge for concentration training. Since the Switch uses a capacitive multi-touchscreen instead of a resistive one, we have a conductive mesh tip stylus this time around. This was actually my first time checking out a capacitive stylus with a mesh tip, since I've previously only used ones with a rubber tip. And compared to those, this is definitely much better. It glides pretty naturally across the screen, and sometimes it does feel like you're just using a regular stylus instead of pressing on the screen with a giant nub. In terms of build quality, this is actually pretty sturdy. A far cry from those cheap rubber styluses. And there's actually some added heft near the tip of the stylus that gives us a nice weight. Even with the switch to a capacitive stylus, there's still clearly some effort put in here. There aren't a lot of Switch games that would benefit directly from stylus controls. So of course you have Brain Age on Switch, being the game the stylus was released with, and obviously Mario Maker 2 to replicate what you originally had on the Wii U gamepad, and for both of these it works perfectly fine. It may require a little bit of dexterity for more precise controls like in Picross, but it never feels too large or unwieldy. It's about as good as a Switch stylus could possibly get. A tier. And before we end, I have to make an honorable mention even though I don't actually own this. Shoutouts to Colors Live for bundling its own Switch stylus that does pressure sensitivity by feeding that data through the headphone jack. True innovators of our time. But yeah, that's every official Nintendo stylus, I guess, at least the ones that were bundled with their respective systems. So, what did we learn from this whole ordeal and tier list? Eh, uh, I don't know, uh, DSi XL, Touchpen Supremacy, and Steve Jobs was very wrong, I guess.